today we are at the um, Pegauer Rand, a crag, pretty interesting limestone crag above this village called Pegau in the Grazer Bergland. And yeah, yet another awesome spot I have to say. Basically consists of a huge cave and yeah, a couple of really bouldery, overhanging, short, sharp roots out of this one. And in between the caves, um, there's also this really uh, kind of slightly overhanging technical face with a couple of other super awesome roots in there. So it's a lot of fun, I have to say. Um, only downside again, we've got the, the highway down there. So there's a constant noise of cars basically up here, but it's not that bad. And yeah, I've been trying this really awesome 8B plus uh, route out of this cave, super overhanging start and you know you've got, <laughs> that's what I like about these bouldery routes, you know, you, you've got two moves and then instantly there's the crux basically which consists of three, four really hard moves finishing off with an insane dyno to this pretty artificial hole, I have to say, the route is called Kiriku and yeah, once you get this one done, this uh, dyno, it's basically a couple of like two more pretty hard moves to a huge big um, hole in this in this wall and from there it's basically done, so this is one of these routes where if you climb it, it doesn't really take you longer than 30 seconds or something because, because everything goes so fast, you know I really like these characteristics when it comes to bouldery routes. But anyway, um, Thorsten is trying one of these more technical vertical climbs, slightly overhanging. Looks pretty nice as well. I think I'm gonna save it for um, another time because today we are really struggling against the heat. I mean, you wouldn't expect expect it. It's already you know November. Look at my I look at my thermometer and I see 23 degrees Celsius here. We've got uh, almost mid-November and this is very very warm. I mean, it's also like a little bit of a microclimate up here because the the cave makes you know makes it possible for the sun to really collect to to really make some heat in here. And this is going to be an awesome winter crag actually when there is no snow up there and it's not melting inside, you know, melting into the caves. Um, yeah, you pretty much got the sun in your back and uh, yeah, awesome conditions on a really cold winter day, I suppose. But today it's actually too hot for the really hard stuff. So we're struggling a bit here against the heat. My skin is already pretty wrecked because the holes are also quite sharp at the same time. Um, but yeah, pretty cool moves. It's also a bit tricky to belay here, you know, on this dyno because it's so uh, it's so far at the beginning of the route, and you really have to be careful that you don't make a uh, a bad grounder or um, a sudden pull to the wall. You know, it's a bit tricky, but uh, we're figuring it out here, I think. Um, yeah, so so much uh, that I have to say about the Pekka Wand. Um, Awesome crack, awesome new project, and I think I'm gonna make one, two more goes or something, or something that my skin is already completely destroyed anyways. Yeah, maybe a little bit of a hangboard session in the evening as well, and then rest day tomorrow and attacking another day, I think. Right. little extra voice over here in this beautiful autumn setting. It was a nice day, I can tell you. Although the sun was kind of inconvenient when it comes to the climbing, I have to say the conditions were rather suboptimal with these over 20 degrees Celsius. Um, yeah, it was quite dry still. It wasn't quite a convenient autumn, autumn day. And it also was quite, you know, um, convenient to get the last sun rays in before the winter sets in, so to say. And as you can see, Torsten uh, chilled here, <laughs> collecting some vitamin D, the last vitamin D for a long time, maybe, who knows.
but um, yeah, here we can see him attempting this route. Uh, it's in the intermediate or in the in the middle space here between the two caves of the Pegor Vans, between the smaller and the bigger cave. And again, this is a rather slightly overhanging vertical technical face climbing style here, and really nice. Um, I would say power endurance routes on small holds, small footholds, as you can see. And I just want to drop a little bit of an extra commentary here to his attempt. Let's take a look at his breathing and also on his um, shaking behavior, so to say. I think with these routes, it's kind of important to always keep up a constant breathing pattern, you know, breathing constantly, maybe even before getting onto the route. Um, taking a little bit of, a, of an emphasis to oxygenizing your body beforehand before even starting, you, you know, taking a few deep breaths and then getting on it. And while you're climbing, since it's a power endurance route, um, there's not really a lot of shakeouts there, not a, really, not a really lot of good shakeouts at least. And that's why you should make an emphasis also on, um, you know, shaking in between your moves. If you can, if you get at least an, uh, like an, a mediocre hold in one hand, just make a little bit of a shakeout before you do the next move. And this way you keep your uh, pump essentially at a minimum. At the same time, trying to keep up a constant breathing pattern and also don't um, avoiding clipping too early, basically. A lot of people waste a lot of energy with clipping too early, um, and locking off holes that are unnecessary, unnecessarily locked off um, further than necessary. You know, when clipping from your hips is here much more efficient. I think Torsten did this really well in this attempt. And also another thing that I want to point out is this flexibility that, it, that he has for all these high steps. This can be quite important on these slightly vertical, you know, slightly overhanging verti vertical face climbs, um, where if you want to step high, you gotta have that hip flexibility in your legs um, to get your feet up. So, and more often than you would than you would think of, it is actually advantageous, as you can see here, to be able to step that high. You know, when we have these 3D overhanging uh, roof climbs where sometimes the feet go first and stuff, it's kind of obvious that a lot of good footwork can help you with toe hooks and heel hooks and all that stuff. But it's just as well the case with these um, slightly overhang overhanging vertical face climbs where, you know, the footholds are kind of more subtle. But if you have the flexibility and you can step really high, you can really make a lot of them. So as you can see, unfortunately, this attempt was not successful, but the next one actually was. And I'm pretty sure this is also due to the heat that was displayed here on this wall. Um, conditions got a bit better as the day progresses and Torsten could send this thing. So yeah, awesome day. Long ding. Long ding. Hast du du. Alright. I already packed my tripod in the backpack, so this is going to be a slightly weird framing here. But anyway, this concludes the uh, end of this little Pekawa Wand adventure. And <laughs> it was quite a battle against the heat today, but Thorsten persevered and finished this. 70 plus, what was it? 70 plus. 70 plus. Yeah. Um, yeah. It was cool. Yeah. Um, yeah. Looks pretty I nice need, actually. I, yeah, I need more tries. That it's that was necessary. <laughs> so yeah, I think five goes. Mm -hmm. But the last go on the day was yeah, just before the sun yeah. set, um, finished it off, and now we have some nice post-workout meal here. Got some rice and curry, 
already tasted coconut it coconut curry so with rice we know this is going to be awesome anyway uh, I hope you enjoyed you. the little video today <laughs> until next time <laughs>